Welcome back to Joe's Computer Museum. Today we're going to take a look at the Apple II SuperDrive card from Reactive Micro. Warm up the CRT, it's time for another episode. Before we review Reactive Micro's card, we need to know a little bit about what the original card is. The original Apple II 3.5-inch disk controller card, also known as the SuperDrive card, was designed and released by Apple in the early 1990s as an upgrade for Apple IIe and Apple II GS computers. It allows these computers access to high-capacity 1.44 megabyte floppy media, hence the reason for the nickname SuperDrive. It also supports most older model 3.5-inch drives, so you can use it with just about any 3.5-inch drive available for those apples. There are some caveats regarding the use of Unidisc drives, so it's a good idea to read the manual before attaching your drives. It does not support 5 and a quarter inch drives, so you'll need a standard Disk 2 card if you want to use those simultaneously. The SuperDrive card has the SuperWAS Integrated Machine, or SWIM chip, which does the magic required to access 1.44 megabyte disks. It also has its own onboard 65CO2 processor, ROM, and RAM. Basically, it's a second computer on a card. This was required because the Apple II is not normally fast enough to keep up with the data stream on 1.44 megabyte floppies. The onboard computer runs at a faster speed, does all the drive interfacing, and simply passes the data to the Apple II at a rate it can deal with. So let's talk about Reactive Micro's card. Reactive Micro started cloning the card in 2006. They were able to crack and clone the programmable logic devices and also strip and scan the printed circuit board, allowing for a direct one-to-one -one clone of the card. After that, a few revisions were made to update the card with modern versions of the components. What we're left with is a modernized version of the classic card, ready to add 1.44 megabyte floppy access to your Apple II. Let's take a look at the card in action. All right, so let's see what the Super Drive card can do. I've got an HD disk here. Come on, focus. Doesn't want to focus, there you go. HD disk, so we know this is a 1.44 disk. And uh, let's go ahead and turn on the Apple. Good old ProDOS 2.41. And so uh, first thing we need to do, let's uh, format this disk. Just use copy to plus to do that. Format disk, ProDOS 5.1, and let's let it do the thing. Well, and there it's done. Takes a little while, but it gets done. So now let's uh, go ahead and copy ProDOS 2.41 to this real quick. Oh, we'll just do a, f a file copy. Okay, and then we'll hit E to copy. Uh, I don't know what that means. Not enter. G. Go. Go. Yes. And here we go. All right, the file copy's done, so let's uh, go ahead and boot to this. So we need to do PR5, and it should boot to this drive. And there we go. Pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and uh, quit to basic. We'll do a cat on that drive, and we'll see how many blocks are on it. Look at that. Do the math between that. Should be 2880. Looks like it. Yeah, 4 and 7, that's 0. That puts it in an 8. That rolls over. Yep. Yep, 27, 26, yep, 2880. So that's, uh, yeah, that's your 1.44 megabyte floppy drive with 1.44 meg floppy disk working on an Apple II. So why would you need one of these cards? 
Well, if you want to use real 1.44 megabyte floppies on an Apple IIe or Apple II GS, or if you want to use one of Steve Chamberlain's floppy EMU units on the Apple IIe, or if you want to use that same unit on an Apple II GS and support 1.44 megabyte images in native floppy mode and not smart port mode, then you're going to need one of these cards. Final thoughts? Reactive Micro Super Drive card is a well-built device and delivers as advertised. In today's retro computing environment of drive emulators, it has a somewhat limited use case, but the use case is there. At $200, the price is a little bit high in my opinion, but for a card with a lower demand and therefore a lower number production run, that is to be expected. But if you need a solution to access 1.44 megabyte floppies on your Apple IIe or Apple II GS, this is your best bet. Well, that's all for today's episode. While you're here, check out some of my other videos, and remember, 8 bits are all you need. Thanks for watching. If you want to help out my endeavors, head on over to Patreon, pick a tier, and get cool stuff. Like early access, behind the scenes videos, your name in the credits, and gadgets. Link in the description.